In the U.S., lawmakers have presented fresh evidence of Donald Trump's efforts to overturn his 2020 election defeat. A committee is investigating whether Trump's false claims about the result led to the storming of the Capitol on January 6, 2021. In the third public hearing, the panel shared evidence that Trump tried to force his vice president, Mike Pence, to overturn the election result. Pursuant to the Constitution, he was not the present in person States. at the hearing, but the former Senate U.S. Vice President Mike Pence, 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 Pence was at the center of it nonetheless. The House Select Committee, which has spent a year investigating the January 6 attack on the U.S. Capitol, presented never-before-seen evidence showing how former President Donald Trump led a campaign to pressure Pence to overturn his 2020 election defeat. Donald Trump wanted Mike Pence to do something no other vice president has ever done. The former president wanted Pence to reject the votes and either declare Trump the winner or send the votes back to the states to be counted again. According to testimony, Trump pressured his vice president in private, but also publicly. Like in this tweet posted the day before the riot, which reads, the vice president has the power to reject fraudulently a chosen electors. Pence didn't follow Trump's demands, aware that he did not have the power to overthrow the election result, as explained by his legal counsel, Greg Jacob. After four and a half... No vice president in 230 years of history had ever claimed to have that kind of authority. To vote for president Pence's refusal to go along with Trump's plan could have cost him dearly. This footage played at the hearing shows rioters at the Capitol calling for his death. It was revealed for the first time that the attackers came within 40 feet, around 12 meters, of Pence and his family, while they were being escorted to safety by his Secret Service detail. The hearing also presented further evidence that Donald Trump and his legal advisor, John Eastman, knew that their plan to invalidate the election result was historically unprecedented and most importantly illegal. But they went ahead with it anyway. According to this email shown by the panel, Eastman even asked to receive a presidential pardon after the riot. Three more public hearings are planned by the committee to lay out their findings. The focus is expected to remain on the evidence alleging that Trump knowingly broke the law while in office and on retracing the series of events that led to the unprecedented attack on U.S. democracy. For more, let's welcome uh, Jim Ropenold. He's a lawyer, a U.S. presidential historian, and an expert on the 1972 Watergate scandal. He joins us now from Cleveland, Ohio. Welcome to DW, Jim. Many have been calling for Trump to be indicted over the January 6th insurrection. To do that, prosecutors would have to prove criminal intent, that Trump knew what he was doing was wrong and went ahead and did it anyway. Based on the case this committee's made so far, do you see any evidence of that? Uh, yes, hello, Michael. Thanks for having me. Um, yesterday was a turning point. Uh, Vice President Pence's attorney, Greg Jacobs, connected the dot and for criminal intent. Clearly, uh, Trump was told what he wanted to do, the scheme that was put together by this guy named Eastman, was illegal. He knew it was illegal. He was told repeatedly it was illegal, and yet he, he went forward with it. So I think the dots have been connected here and, and that there is sufficient proof of criminal intent uh, by the, the former president to try and stop uh, the peaceful transfer of power. And there are multiple felonies that that gets involved into. Hmm. How likely is it uh, Trump will get indicted, let alone convicted? Well, you know, it's a, it's a good question. And I, I would pose the question the other way around. What would happen to this country if he's not indicted? Um, this evidence is compelling. With Richard Nixon, we got tapes to show he was involved in criminal activity. Now we have with Trump insiders, and a lot of them, saying the same thing, that what he was doing was illegal. And um, we really need to have the political will to bring this indictment, because this is criminal activity at the highest level, mm. and it really just cannot go uh, unaccounted for. A lot of powerful testimony at Thursday's hearing, including from retired federal judge Michael Ludwig, 
I want to get your reaction to what some might describe as one of the more chilling statements he made. Donald Trump and his allies and supporters are a clear and present danger to American democracy. Not mincing words there. Do you agree with that statement, sir? Yeah. A hundred percent. And this is a very conservative judge um, who is a very thoughtful guy. You can see how deliberately he speaks. But what he's saying is absolutely true, which is January 6th was bad, but but it's worse now because we we look back a year and a half later and people still believe the big lie. They still believe this was not a big deal. And they're telling us that in 2024, if this happens again, they they will they will attempt this again and they could very easily succeed. So I think he is exactly right. This is a very precarious moment for American democracy. Jim, in the half minute we have left here, I want to ask you one more question. Today marks the 50th anniversary of Watergate, a monumental political scandal that forced the resignation of uh, President Richard Nixon, of course. Based on what you've seen so far, years from now, how will this current scandal stack up to Watergate by comparison? Uh, this scandal is, uh, by many factors, worse than Watergate. Um, Watergate was a true problem, and I don't mean to minimize it. It was abuse of power. Nixon did a number of things, including in foreign affairs, that were really egregious. But this is a president who not only was going after democracy itself to stay in power, he literally was scheming and happy to see his own vice president assassinated in that process. You cannot imagine a worse scenario, in my view, and this is much, much worse than Watergate. Jim Ropenold, lawyer, U.S. presidential historian. Many, many thanks, sir. Thank you, Michael. Good to see you.